<clears throat> so we're getting ready to make some braised lamb. Um, I prepared all of the things that I'll need to toss in for just an easy cook up. Um, so none of that's going to be in this video, but I will explain right now what I've done so far. So we have our one thing about me, I'm going to remix something, right? So we have our maripois here. Usually it's made with some celery, some uh, carrots, some white onions, and garlic. But your girl, I don't know what it is. I have this thing against white onions. I don't know why, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. So I'm putting red onions in this. So leave me alone and don't come for me. These are my dishes. Yes, I have dishes. Yes. <laughs> um, so here we have our tomato puree. The recipe calls for like a canned, a cup and a half of canned tomato puree. So I made my own. I, I ground up tomatoes, um, a tiny bit of garlic, some sage, and some scotch bonnet peppers because you know I love spice. Like, we can't really cook without spice ever. So speaking of spice, we have our spice, array of spices here. Honestly, it's, it is what it is. I don't have a rhyme and reason why I'm, why I'm putting these spices in this braised lamb. But every time I cook any type of fish or meat or make a dry rub or any type of seasoning, I like to com combo. If it's nothing specific to like... A cultural dish or anything like that I like to really add a mix of these this uh, profile of flavors this right here I'm ex I don't usually cook with it's super expensive um, but the you just need a little bit to have the flavor pop off so I'm adding saffron my pepper uh, my pepper grounder my pepper grinder is the worst so I use my pestle and mortar to grind up some pepper corns for the meal. Then we have our pink Himalayan salt here. Um, have our onion powder. Garlic powder is somewhere. Oh, duh. Right here is the garlic powder. And then we have our wine. So. A chef that I follow, I actually had her food and I, I I loved her food so much. And on her page, she uses uh, Taylor Port as the wine to cook up um, instead of like a Merlot or another red wine. So I said, you know, let me try a tea pain for the pain. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm excited to see how this actually cooks because I've never cooked with Taylor Port before. Um, and then over here, we have our... Bouillon Maggie cubes crushed up already. So this is what we're starting with. This is what we're, oh, I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm so sorry, y'all. So this is leftover garlic. We're gonna put this to the side somewhere. Um, this is some thyme in case I need extra. Um, but thyme is going in there definitely. We have a roasting blend, which is parsley. Um, there's some thyme in here, rosemary. And we have our poultry blend, which I really encourage everyone to cook with. I just love these herbs. They just, they're just, they just make a lot of sense. So I usually add this to my marinade, which I'm going to show you what that is in a second. But this is thyme, sage, and rosemary. Now the sage, I said earlier, I put in the, the, um, the tomato puree. So that's where that's at. And then we have our bay leaves. Um, moving on, we have the marinade I talk about. I put this shit on everything. I'm not, I'm not going to hold you. This goes in almost all of my dishes. It just make it's just a perfect base for everything, whether it's a marinade, whether it's, you know, the first, uh, sauce that you want to put into a, a dish. It just makes a lot of sense to use that. I have this leftover Italian mamba hot pepper sauce. Just to use it up, honestly, it like the recipe doesn't call for this at all, but you know, anything, any way I can add um, extra spice, I'm gonna I'm go ahead and do that. And then this, okay, wait, what is this right here? Oh, we have our, <laughs> we have a tomato paste. It says crunchy chili oil because I like to reuse 
these glass jars. I, I love this chili oil, by the way, but this is not why we're, we are here. This is tomato paste, y'all. Um, and our, this is, I think this is the star of the show because I've been, I remember first hearing about mango chutney like so long ago. And I just was always curious about what this was hitting for in terms of taste. I tasted it by itself already. And it's just the, instead of adding like brown sugar or, you know, any type of caramelized sugar into this, um, recipe, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and use the mango chutney. Um, the last time I made braised lamb, I used, uh, dried apricots and I, I actually soaked the dried apricots in, um, the, the stock that I used, um, I soaked it in a stock that I use and it was such, it added such a really interesting dynamic, uh, flavor profile to, to the actual meal. So I, I'm, I'm going to see what this mango chutney is about and I can't wait to use it. Speaking of stock, I have some lamb stock. Actually, I, I cooked some lamb shoulder yesterday and save the stock for this so it's not beef stock it's not it's not store-bought I really I like to make my own stock from scratch so if I have whether it's veggie stock or some type of meat I will go ahead and cook up that um meat so that I can have the stock for you know a meal like this so that is it y'all that's what we're starting with I'm gonna go ahead and start filming the actual cooking process Obviously, there's going to be a last lapse of time for when we are in, when we are in the oven. And when I say we, I mean the lamb, sh lamb shanks. I keep trying to, I keep saying lamb chops, but the shanks, when they're in the oven, you probably will not be, you'll see them go in the oven, but you won't see them cook in the oven, obviously. But yeah, let's get this party started. I'm so excited for this dish. Oh, I didn't tell y'all. So, you know... I like to season and marinate my meat. I don't care if the recipe says put pepper and salt. I'm gonna put way more than pepper and salt on my meat. So this this um these shanks have been marinated, marinating for a couple of days actually, believe it or not, um in my base right. And this base, it comment if you want the recipe to this base, and I'll definitely put up a video on how to make it because you can see this is running out. The next time I make. A fresh batch I'll definitely record that so I, I, I had it sit in that for two days and then today I added my usual profile there's some paprika some bouillon cubes there's some nutmeg in here what else did I put in here honestly I'll just be sprinkling stuff in on my meat because I have this memory of how I want my like I have a memory of the seasonings that I use I typically use and I just repeat that um, whenever I cook meat. So I added that and you can see it's nice and seasoned, ready to be seared. Um, so yeah, there will be no measurements. Um, and I apologize for that, but I literally count on my ancestors and the elders to guide me in the kitchen. Um, I don't do measurements like that, but hopefully we can eyeball together and figure out what we're doing together. All right, let's get it started. All right, y'all, we about to start cooking. Um, usually I will put some music in the back. Maybe I'll put some music in the background. I don't know yet. But I wanted y'all to hear my voice, and I guess I'm kind of I'm gonna kind of guide y'all through this um, through this process of my cooking. So I'm just gonna go ahead we have we rinse our pot our pan our cast iron skillet we rinsed it already it's clean we're just going to add some oil to sear um just a little bit just to cover the base of the pan to sear our shanks so i'm going to have that heat up a little bit um yeah and be right back. Okay, as you can hear, I threw some water in the oil just to see if it was hot enough for us to sear. So we're about to sear. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and sear these bad boys. <clears throat> so we're just gonna sear them on all sides. Okay. 
wall. I wish I was recording, but y'all, the oil just got. I don't know if you can see my hand. Like, I was just abused by this uh, lamb right here. Like, excuse you. Oh, we got some browning. We got some browning. You like that. Don't be pop and dropping on me. Crazy. Look at that. Look at that beautiful brown. I need to get that side. Look at how beautiful that is, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, all that flavor. I just don't, I just don't understand why you would just put salt and pepper on that. Like, why wouldn't you want flavor on your, on your shank? You know what I mean? That doesn't make any sense to me. It's looking good. It's <laughs> looking good, good, good. I don't know about y'all, but every time I'm cooking, I'm in such a good mood. Like, I don't. I don't know. Cooking makes me so happy. Creating in the kitchen makes me so happy. I just be in a good mood. Ow. I just got popping in. Trying to get this on this side so we can break. So what you want to do is kind of get it brown on all sides. And I'm trying to get the, I did the front and the back. I'm trying to get like the side of it too. So bear with me here. Okay, all right. Got that going. Ah! Stop it. Yeah, I want to go. Yeah. The is pretty much brown. I'm trying to get that other side down, but I'm going to go ahead and fish it out. All right. Thank you. All done, my guy. All right, we have our browned lamb shanks here, as you guys can see. Hopefully, I'm capturing this properly. I'm going to put this down before it burns me. So, I just set them out on that tray. I'm going to have it sit there until it's ready to go in the oven. Let me just show y'all better what this looks like. Yummy in my tummy. Ah, I can't wait till this is done. All right. So obviously we have the remainder of the oil and the bits from the seasoning. So we're going to go ahead and saute our maripois in this remnant of juicy deliciousness that we've created. So go ahead and throw all of that in there. Like I said, okay, wait, I can tell y'all. So I actually did two carrots and two celeries and I did a whole big ass red onion and I did six, six cloves of garlic um, all together. So that's y'all measurement for this. this. That was easy to do. That was, that was really easy to do. Um, I'll try and write it in the description or whatever, but that was the measurement. Trying to get all of that in there, and we're gonna go ahead and saute this. Look at look at how look at look at the color already. Look at the color already. That's what I'm talking about. There's no way you can achieve this with just salt and pepper, my guy. I don't know what y'all be on with that salt and pepper stuff. Like, but I will salt it at this level because I do like to salt in layers so that. The flavor comes out. Layer of food just to get that flavor to come out a little bit. And I'm gonna continue to saute. Mm, the 
aromatics are aromatic in right now. So we have our maripaw that's been cooking for about three minutes. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and add our wet, lovely bits of ingredients. So first we're gonna go ahead and add our tea pain. I'm so excited to use this, y'all. Y'all don't understand. Y'all don't understand. It's been a while since I had this myself, but if y'all don't know, this is a dessert wine. It's about 14% fruit proof. Am I right? Last time I checked, it was 14%. Let me see if they changed it. 15%, what? Maybe? So what you want to do, I would say add about hmm, a cup and a half of wine. Maybe two cups. I don't know. Yeah, that was like a cup and a half I just added. So y'all, I don't be know. Like I said, I, I go by vibes and it looked like a cup and a half, maybe a cup and three quarters. So I just added that. I'm gonna go ahead and add, like I said, all of the wet ingredients. Um, I'm gonna add my stock. Where's my stock? So like I said, I had some lamb stock from yesterday already like made Hold on, I had it already made and I refrigerated it so now I'm going to pour it up in here so I have some extra fat that I'm gonna cook up with this because you know sometimes the fat be flavorful a lot so I'm adding that in there I'm also gonna go ahead and add all of the that's that's good stuff right there that is good stuff i'm gonna save this just in case we need a little bit for later i don't see why we would but just in case if not if i don't use it for this recipe i know i know just the thing to use it for so it's all good all right so we added that and we're gonna go ahead and add the tomato puree um so I kind of made way more than necessary. So I'm definitely going to save some of this. So I'm adding about a cup and a half of this too. Maybe like a little less than that. Um, where is my paper towel? Yeah. what it's looking like so far it's looking good y'all it is looking good well it's not looking the best like it's not looking like anything right now but it's going to look like something in a little bit i promise you um so i'm gonna go ahead and add the paste as well and all of my herbs so uh you want to add i would say like two tablespoons I'm doing the whole jar because it's about two tablespoons left in here. Herbs. I'm going to just throw these bad boys in there. Because why the fuck not? Like, why not? Some more rosemary. Some more thyme. I need to put everything in there. Add the bay leaves. Do like two or three. Our mango chutney. This is a star of the show, like I said. Besides the lamb, the chutney is the star of the show. I'm not gonna lie and say this ain't it. This is it right here. So let me add some. Mm, look at that. It's thick. I would say at like two 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 tablespoons of the chicken. I think that's mm, just a little bit. I think that's good for the flavor profile. Yeah. What is that? Oh, it's tomato paste. I'm to do a lamb shoulder. Um 
but the shanks just made sense for for a brazing a braise so i go i been i was like i wanted to do this this mango chutney lamb shoulder braise but now it's a mango chutney lamb shank braise you feel me all right now we are going to add some flour just to thicken this a little bit i'm using um ein corn iron corn y'all gonna have to help me pronounce it it's e-i-n-k-o-r-n corn like that's the that's the that's the flour that I'm using. It's this whole wheat flour. It's like really, really, um, obviously it's not processed, but it's a, it's a really great whole wheat, um, whole grain flour that hasn't been really messed with like that. So I, I use this to make my pastas from scratch. So as this cook, we're, as this cooks, we're gonna go ahead and also add in mm, some of the spices that we have waiting for us. Y'all, y'all don't. I haven't even added anything else into this and so far so far you just you know when you taste something you just know it's going to slap oh yeah this is definitely one of those so i'm adding some nutmeg as you can see i'm not measuring shit some cloves and stews it's such a underrated flavor cinnamon i know cinnamon sounds crazy a little bit but trust me on this ground ginger but come on what do you mean what are you saying what do you mean this slept on too i feel like anytime there's lamb you gotta add some cumin i'm just gonna add chili powder for some razzle dazzle this is me freestyling right i encourage y'all to freestyle if this these uh, seasonings are not speaking to y'all, do what you do, do what you do, and do what you don't. But it's those seasonings just make sense for me. Uh, Duh. Like, are you are you dumb? Oh, onion powder, of course. We have the bouillon. We're gonna put a little bit, just a little bit, just to taste it, see how it is before we add the rest. We have our ground pepper. Yeah. I'm actually going to add some of my paste into this. I need just a little bit into that. Let this cook for a little bit longer. Yes, look at that, it's thickening already. Definitely throw this in there, the rest of that. And we're gonna add salt. All right, let's get this. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Baba. Thank you, my Lord. Y'all. Mm. The lamb is ready to go the fuck in here. Look at look at how pretty that is. Oh, this Dan. Ooh, that almost was an accident. I'm good for an accident. But the Lord said it will not be a portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just feel like this sauce, I could have done another shank. But it's okay. We can recreate this. It's okay. All right. What I'm going to do is just go ahead and coat this bad boy. We're going to have extra gravy for whatever we need extra gravy. Right? 
Can y'all see that? I wish I had another shank, y'all. I wish I had another shank. It's nice and spicy. There's that hint of mango, like sweet undertone in there. I'll taste the cinnamon. I taste the nutmeg. And it's just, I just know when it's done, all of that flavor seeping, seeping into the meat. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, how can I forget? It's pretty hot right now, but I'm insane. This is my ghost pepper chili. I'm a little insane, so I'm gonna go ahead and, how can I forget? Grind some of that in there. I'm actually just, might not even, no, I gotta stir this bad boy in. Yeah, this is a little insane, I know that. But I love spice. Again, proceed with caution. Oh, that looks, y'all, I just want y'all to understand that once this is done, nobody talk to me, because the way I'm going to enjoy this is actually, wow. All right, so we're gonna now transfer this into the oven for two and a half hours um, and see how this bad boy looks when we're done. I'm so excited. 2.45, can't wait. Excuse the messiness, but can't wait till this is done. So we're actually going to have the shanks lift. It's some spaghetti squash. I haven't had spaghetti squash in so long. And you know why? Because I don't know what it is about cutting these up, but it's so discouraging knowing that you're about to cut this thing up because it's so hard to cut through. But look at my knife. Okay. Like why, why do we have to do that to the squash? Like why does that have to happen for me to cut through squash? Like, okay. There's something happening. Wow. Like what? Mm. There we go. That is gonna be our squash because I just don't get it. I don't understand. I'm just taking the seeds out of this part. No seeds. Make sure there's no seeds in here. Okay. We're done. And that only took my left shoulder to. All right, I'm gonna put these to the side and we're gonna make the glaze. All right, so remember that container I had the, um, whatchamacallit? The tomato paste in, it's this. It's Trader Joe's chili oil. I swear by this chili oil, oh my gosh. I put this on almost everything. My base, I put on everything. This, almost everything. So I'm gonna start with that. Just about two tablespoons, I wanna say. Close. I'm gonna add some pepper. And in no particular order does this go in to the mix. Add some added oil. For this because we need it as liquidy as possible. I'm actually going to add the remaining of this bomba sauce that I did not add to the lamb, which is typical of me. I be forgetting shit sometimes. It still works out though. Paprika.
pretty much the same spices I used for <laughs> for my lamb I'm using for this. That's why I said, y'all, I, I, I keep it very simple when it comes to flavor and food because these flavors just do well with everything. A little bit of senna, some garlic, some salt. Did I use onion powder? I didn't use onion powder yet. Onion dodo. Of course. Like, why wouldn't we? A phone call, but I added some of my <laughs> my base in there. And look at that. It looks so yummy. So this is what I'm gonna layer the um, the squash with. Hey. Okay. I wish this hole was bigger. <laughs> That's what no one says, actually. She didn't say that. I don't know if he said that either, but she definitely did not say that. So just going ahead and oiling this up, seasoning this up. Luckily, see, see this little crevice? I need to clean that. See this little crevice I made? I'm gonna go ahead and season that crevice. See, everything happens for a reason. I'm putting all of that in there. I know that's gonna be good once it cooks. Let me take a selfie. Should definitely. I should, I'm leaving just a little bit to add to. It's not a lot, but this is gonna go back into once we're done with the squash, and we scrape it. I'm gonna put some of that in there. So I'm throwing these in the air fryer, and we're gonna check in in about 30 minutes to see what log on. So good. So so good. You want to have your parchment paper laid out. If you're going to do this in the oven or if you're going to do this in the air fryer, that's my parchment paper. I'm just going to go ahead. Hopefully this shit <laughs> fits. When I say fits, I mean like... Okay. It looks like it's going to be all right. It looks like it's going to be fine. All right. Bad boy's ready. We're about to throw it in. Catch you guys on the flip side. All right, our spaghetti squash is fresh out of the air fryer, looking good. I'm gonna scrape it and get it ready for the lamb. All right, the squash is ready. I just picked it out with the fork and it's looking so good. Like it's looking so good, so, so good. So lamb is finished, all done. It's looking so rich. I wanna show you guys how it falls off the bone really quickly. So I'm gonna go with this guy right here and show you, see that? Moist, bone is literally, oh Jesus, look at that. And then we have our squash back there, which I'm going to go ahead and, mm, Guys, like, subscribe, share if you enjoyed this. If you try it, please let me know how it went because honestly, ugh, like, are you, are you, are you, are we, are we, like, are you, are you, seriously, are you? Because I am, I am. But thank you for watching so much. Stay tuned. I plan to do, I don't know when guys bear with me but I do want to do more of these videos more of me cooking um more of these recipes um so that you guys can um enjoy thank you so much again and remember always 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 chase the challenge later us we're going to drizzle mm, 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 mm. oh my gosh That's a thick 
and fill me nice and thick. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I had to wipe my screen so y'all could see what I'm working with. Look at this. Look at this. What? Oh, I'm about to tear this up. Like, <laughs> y'all don't. So delicious. Ugh.